Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at The Daily Dope. Welcome aboard. Today is Tuesday, May 28th, 2019. And this is episode 309 of The Daily Dope. So yes, yeah, started off, uh, I had my mic turned off. <laughs> so I opened up the show and it's like, I'm like, oh, wait a second. Hang on. So right up and turn that on because uh, I was actually checking the uh, volume levels for a uh, video that I'm including in today's show. So got a big show ahead of us. Uh, I am not only going to be providing the latest tabletop gaming news. I am also going to be reviewing Shaolia Warring States. This is from Bad Comet Games. This is coming to Kickstarter uh, my understanding is I believe the Kickstarter will launch on June 5th. So if something changes, I will actually have point that out. So Dan from No Enemies Here pops in and says, where have you been, man? Holiday weekend, dude. Weren't you here? <laughs> Weren't you here on the Thursday show? When I said, yeah, I won't be back until Tuesday. Dan doesn't pay much attention, I, I notice. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. So, anyway, I do want to point out, as Dan is pointing out here, chat is available on YouTube. This is a live show. I do pay attention to the chat. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I actually kind of, um, I don't know, dissuade some of the stranger commenters from taking part. But if you want to say hello, or maybe you have a question, or maybe you want to get a better look at uh, something from... Sheolia, or have a question about that, then by all means, please chime in and I will respond. If you watch the video and you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you dig those, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that little bell because once you do that, you will be notified when there's new videos that appear. And of course, you will find out when the stream goes live, usually within eh, about five minutes or so. So, all right. So, uh, yeah. So, Dan says, ADD, man. ADD. All right. All right. All right. So, I uh, had a great holiday weekend. Hopefully, everybody in the U.S. who watches had a great holiday weekend as well. If you're outside the U.S., hopefully you had a great weekend. So, thankfully... Uh, everything's uh, all good. So, got a good amount of news today. I'm going to take a quick sip here before I jump into that. Got other items on the agenda as well. I do actually have a, uh, a sale going on for games that I've done reviews of, both uh, board games and role-playing games. I'll talk about those in just a little bit as well. But first, let's hop on into the news because Modifius Entertainment has a mysterious card game that's arriving this December. And I've got the dope. The world of beloved mystery author Agatha Christie will be translated into a tense but fun card game of mystery, bluffing, and deduction, where everyone is guilty, but only one of them is guilty of murder. Hmm. -hmm. Agatha Christie, Death on the Cards is designed for two to six players and uses a beautifully illustrated deck of 80 cards. Players work cooperatively to solve a murder, using their detective skills to unmask the culprit and prevent their escape. The twist is that one of the players is the murderer and must work against the group to keep themselves hidden. Players also have dark secrets from their past they want to keep hidden from the other players. Who can you trust? Obviously, you can trust me. Nah. In bringing the game to life, the design team at Modifius Entertainment drew on the rich literary history of Agatha Christie's gripping stories. Detective Hercule Pierrot, Miss Marple, Harley Quinn, 
the Joker's girlfriend, what? And Mr. Satterwaith, Parker Pine, Lady uh, Eileen Bundle Brent, Tommy and Tuppence, and Ariad Oliver all feature within the game seeking to find the murderer. Collect sets of these familiar characters to help reveal each player's secrets. Agatha Christie Death on the Cards is for two to six players, plays in around 30 minutes. There is no MSRP info available just yet. This looks like a game probably for about ages 12 and up. And the game will be coming to stores around Christmas time. So pretty cool, pretty sweet. Uh, I like the artwork. The artwork's kind of kind of kind of cool little, you know, animation sort of style to it. Uh, you know, it's funny though. Here in the US, I don't think Agatha Christie's well, okay, Agatha Christie, let's let's be honest has sold more novels than I think five other people in history. So I'm not saying she's not popular. I just think uh, it's always seemed to me that she was always more popular like in Europe than in the United States. Now I'm not saying she's not popular in the United States. Just I think Americans have more of a taste for the hard boiled kind of detectives, you know, the Sam Spades sort of uh, Philip Marlowe characters, but you know, it's very possible I'm completely wrong. My next news piece is from my pals over at Tiny Battle Publishing because they've got a truly what if war game. It is now available. I've got the dope on Operation Icarus and it's a lot of dope. So sit back and relax. Uh, Dan actually says popular in Quebec, French speaking people. You know, it's with Hico Peru. Anyway, on to this news piece. On May 9th, 1940, Great Britain issued a message to the leadership of Iceland, offering military defense of the island kingdom in exchange for permission for British troops to establish a base there, expelling existing German diplomats and forces and preventing a German invasion of Britain from the north. The Icelandic government declined, stating its neutrality. The following day, the British invaded without resistance at Reykjavik, and the rest is history. But what if German invasion forces had beaten the British to Iceland or had landed simultaneously or shortly after? The Germans named their unrealized plan to invade Iceland Untatentinken Icarus. I know I'm not even anywhere close to pronouncing anything but Icarus correct. Anyway, in English, it's Operation Icarus. Tiny Battle Publishing's thrilling game of the same name revives this tenuous turning point of World War II where British troops stood between Germany and the rest of the world on 40,000 square miles of icy rock in the North Atlantic. Iceland, a bleak, sparsely populated island of about 200,000 people, sat astride the northernmost maritime route between North America and Great Britain. From Icelandic bases, the Germans would have had a good shot at seriously disrupting maritime commerce along the North Atlantic. That having been said, the Germans would have been going against a far more powerful naval force than their own and would have had to rely heavily on stealth and luck to pull off such an invasion. The conventional side of the equation was comprised of the German 163rd Infantry Division, supported by some light armor, a few extra guns, a few Luftwaffe reconnaissance aircraft with the range to make it, plus whatever bases they or their infiltrators might have been able to secure. Opposing them were the British, licking their wounds from Norway, but still the most powerful naval force in the Atlantic. They would have put up a desperate fight rather than allow their sea lanes to be horrendously impacted. For a number of reasons, the two key objectives, likely to be chosen by both sides, were Reykjavik and Ukuriyal. I don't know how to pronounce that city. It's the other big city. <laughs> Hence the emphasis on these areas in the game. Operation Icarus is a brigade-level tactical war game featuring land, sea, and air units navigating Iceland, the ocean, and sea surrounding it, and the skies above. The game is for two players, ages 14 and up, plays in around 90 minutes to two hours, carries an MSRP of $34, it's on sale right now for $29, or you can get it in PDF from our friends over at War Game Vault for $14. So. Pretty interesting, eh? This seems like this might be pretty cool. Something a little bit different, which is uh, something that I noticed Tiny Battle Publishing and Flying Pig Games both tend to do, is uh, not just rehash the same old, same old. 
It's not decision games. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I got no time for them. Anyway, but this looks pretty cool. And you can get it uh, basically in PDF, print on demand. Although you're going to be doing the printing over at Wargame Vault as well. Let's move into some role-playing game news because we've got some big role-playing game news. Because the English-speaking fans of the Dark Eye role-playing game have been waiting forever and ever and ever for this because the magic of Aventuria Kickstarter has launched. Here's the dope. Explore the deeper mysteries of the Dark Eye with Magic of Aventuria and enhance your gameplay with additional rules, professions, and archetypes in 220 pages. Magic of Aventuria gives you access to new magical traditions, perks, and spells, and gives you the background of what magic is like in Aventuria. Magic of Aventuria allows you to take complete control over the mystical art of delving into some of the strangest and most powerful practices of every kind of magic, from word to song to dance. Yes, dance magic. Expand your magical repertoire with new traditions, spells, and enchantments. Nearly two dozen professional packages expand options for starting characters, and new focus rules for spell workshops allow mages to develop new and exciting spell effects. There is a short video from Ulysses Spiel for the Kickstarter, so let's take a look. The Kickstarter has a slew of pledge levels for the Magic of Aventuria, and uh, which I swear it's like if you've never played the Dark Eye, you could get just about everything you want all in this Kickstarter. But the two pledge levels that I think are probably going to garner the most interest are going to be the digital and physical core books. So for a $50 pledge, you can receive the 240-page Magic of Aventuria, the 64-page Conspiracy of Mages Adventure, the 48-page Legacy of the Theater Knights Sourcebook, card sets, character sheets, and more, all in a digital format. For a $100 pledge, you can receive all of that. Excuse me. Wow. Had dinner right before the show. Wow. Oh, excuse me. Wow. Boy, oh boy. Anyway, for a $100 pledge, you can receive all of that, except my belching, plus a physical copy of the hardcover Magic of Aventuria, and the expected delivery is going to be late this year. So I know there are a lot of people who had been really kind of, 
upset that there wasn't a magic book for the Dark Eye. Um, yeah, because, you know what? I mean, the Dark Eye's pretty cool. The system's very different. Uh, very crunchy in some ways, and then light in other ways. But uh, I know there were a lot of people who were kind of ticked that uh, it's taken this long for even the Kickstarter for the magic book to kind of come out. And right now, I don't know what's going on with Ulysses North America or Ulysses Spiel. Seems like, uh, seems like the company's in a bit of flux because even this Kickstarter is not on the Ulysses homepage for their German site or the North American site either. I don't know. It's a little, a little odd. Okay, more RPG news because a new third-party source book for Dungeons and Dragons has arrived from Arcana Games, and it actually tackles the Greek mythos. Here's the dope on Arcadia. Arcadia is a combined setting and player's handbook for 5th edition. Inspired by the history and myths of ancient Greece, the book contains 100 pages of densely packed all-new Greek-themed content for both players and GMs. There are 12 new class archetypes. The Barbarian gets the Path of the Hero, based on heroes like the mighty Hercules and Ajax. The Bard, College of the Muse, inspired by the Muses, Orpheus, and myths of Satyr and Siren. Cleric, there's the Domain of Face. Face. Domain of Fate. Duh. Recalling on ancient oracles and the Three Fates. There's a druid with the circle of beasts in the image of Dionysus, Circe, and Pan. There's the fighter, who is now a hoplite, made in the mold of classic Greek heroes like Achilles, Leonidas, and Perseus. There's the monk, the way of the gladiator, drawing on Roman gladiators, wielding exotic weapons like a trident and net. And the paladin gets the Oath of Judgment, a tribute to Thunderbolt hurling Zeus and kings of old. The ranger becomes the Amazon, inspired by fierce female warriors such as Artemis and the Amazons. There's the rogue who becomes a trickster, sparked by Odysseus, Prometheus, and other archetypal tricksters who spurn the gods. Sorcerer becomes the demigod bloodline, created from the demigods of Greek legend. Warlock becomes the dead king patron. Servants of the Titans, themed on ancient Egyptian pharaohs and mummies. Then there's also the Wizard School of Philosophy, a twist on ancient philosophers such as Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates. I know, I'm just kidding. Doing my little uh, Bill and Ted. It's Socrates, I know. There are ten new races and sub-races, a Greek take on humans, dwarves, and elves, including a drow culture based on ancient Egypt. Uh, there are Greek monsters, the satyr, the siren, the centaur, the gorgon, and the harpies. 20 new feats and racial feats. 30 new mystical monsters. 30 new magic items as well. Arcadia also includes a horde of bronze gear, including all new weapons, armor, equipment, trinkets, and more. Ancient ships that can be customized with prow rams, ballistae, and hurl Arcadian fire. This is an epic setting, a pantheon of powerful gods and dark titans, cities based on Sparta, Athens, Troy, and more, neighboring ancient civilizations inspired by Egypt, Persia, and Atlantis. The 100-page PDF for Arcadia is available now on DriveThruRPG for $20. So I see uh, Rob Moffitt's popped in to chat. Good to see you, Rob. So... The artwork to this looks really cool. I like the fact that it's a uh, it's a source book, you know, inspiration from Greek mythology. One thing that throws me off though is a hundred pages for a, in a PDF for twenty dollars. That seems really high. We're talking, that's twenty cents a page on a PDF. So plus you figure if there's a lot of this artwork in that, there's only a hundred pages. No, I have no idea. Although, I gotta say, it does look pretty cool. It does look pretty cool. And my final news piece, the latest campaign for Call of Cthulhu, and more specifically, Pulp Cthulhu, from Chaosium, is available in PDF as of today. And I've got the dope on, a cold fire within. 
Brendan Sterling sought answers in experimental past life regression. Unfortunately, his mind isn't the only one seeking answers in the past. A Cold Fire Within is a campaign for Pulp Cthulhu. Set in 1935, a missing persons case leads to the discovery of a foul plot that could change time itself and bring disaster to the world. A cult intent on unleashing the power of the Great Old Ones leaves a trail through the Catskill Mountains and into the very heart of the planet. Within the subterranean world of Kinyanyan, the heroes will encounter forgotten secrets, strange lore, and bewildering inhabitants. Curious cities of gold, ruined temples, and dark forests are just some of the terrors that lurk below the ground. Yet before the heroes descend into nightmare, they must contend with remnants of ancient worlds, unruly mountain people, and psychic devilry. Along the way, the heroes may find that going back to the end of an ancient city is the only answer. Perhaps in Lomar's doom shall they unlock the secrets of both, both past and present. A complete six-part campaign for Pulp Cthulhu, a cold fire within, presents new rules and skills for psychic powers, parapsychology, dematerialization, and telepathy, new spells, details on the people and lands of Knanyan, as well as a new hero organization, the Open Mind Group. Six rated play heroes are also provided. There are fearsome monsters, otherworldly designs, and psychic powers all meshing together to present your heroes with an epic and act in, uh, action-packed challenge. Wow, I can't speak today. I don't know. Dare you step into the darkness of lost worlds? The 176-page PDF of A Cold Fire Within is available from DriveThruRPG for $17.99. So, of course it's cool. I am always like super pumped when I see there's new Chaosium stuff that's out because I like Chaosium. They've uh, they've been ironed out, you know, some of their, most of their problems have been ironed out. But what's with the artwork these days with Chaosium? So it's, it's either, it's either we've got this really oddball, it's showing, it's showing up now. They've got this strange kind of art style. This one artist, all of his faces look really weird, even people who are supposed to be totally normal. And then we also have artwork on the cover, which looks like it's uh, from the artist who does the uh, Garfield games, the North Sea uh, series of games, like Raiders of the North Sea, which, I don't know, that, to me that doesn't equate Lovecraftian horror. I don't know, it's kind of weird. And then we've got this one uh, image that looks totally fine. So... I don't know. I have no idea. So, Rob Moffat's complaining, why can't it be Wargame Wednesday every day? Because it's not Wednesday every day, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, Rob Moffat's like, oh, he was excited because he's like, hey, I'm catching the show. And it's like, oh, wait, today's not Wednesday. Today's Tuesday. That's right. So, anyway, as I'd like to point out, I've been talking about uh, War Game Vault, plus a uh, little bit of drive through RPG. Of course, the Gaming Gang and thus the Daily Dope are affiliates of the One Bookshelf sites. So, if you are going to swing over to drive through RPG or the War Game Vault, please swing by thegaminggang.com first. The RP, uh, drive through RPG is the banners up top. War Game Vault's down on the bottom of the website. Please click on one of those banners before you go to the sites, because that way... If you do make a purchase, I get a small piece of that. And I had to say thank you very much to people out there because just like the past three days, uh, it was like $20 in uh, commissions or whatever they want to consider it. So uh, that, was, that was very nice because um, usually I point it out all the time that usually the... Uh, what I make on drive through RPG pays for the hosting for the website, which is about, it's just under $70 a month. So all those nickels, those dimes and stuff, they really, really do add up. So what's coming up on the show? Well, there's only going to be one other show this week and that's going to be tomorrow because if you were watching last week, I did point out, I'm going to be traveling to Phoenix, Arizona so that I can help my mom move back to the Chicago area 
So I am going to be driving back here. So uh, I am leaving um, uh, Red Eye tomorrow. So I am going to do a show tomorrow night, but it's going to be kind of kind of short. And uh, yeah, so Dan from <laughs> No Enemies here is like, hope to see you at WBC. Nope, not going to WBC. I don't know if I'm going to Origins, so mm, I don't know. Uh, so Rob says, I need a special op to Jeff's house to place Wednesday P-Touch stickers over every day on my calendar. I don't use calendars. Calendar I use is on my phone. Come on, it's the 21st century here. I schedule everything on that. Do my uh, my interviews when I'm at the cons and stuff like that. So, so anyway, so on tomorrow's show, it is War Game Wednesday. And because it's going to be kind of a shorter show, I was originally going to review uh, Warfighter from Dan Versen Games, but I want to kind of delve into that a bit because I do have some expansions and stuff that Dan Versen Games sent me as well. So I'm not going to do that review tomorrow because um, I won't have time. But what I am going to do is take a first look at Rifles in the Pacific from Tiny Battle Publishing. This just showed up today. So I have heard very good things. It is a solitaire game. Always, always in the mood for good solitaire war games. So this is uh, the second in the Rifles series. I think the uh, I think the other Rifles game is um, I think it's Eastern Front, if I remember correctly. So that'll be tomorrow. I also received Tango Down. Tango Down arrived today, and. Eddie was uh, Eddie over at Tiny Battle Publishing was kind enough to actually send me the core games for the in the, in the trenches World War One series because for some strange reason <laughs> I was sent the expansions without actually having any uh, any of the base games. I was like, okay, so what can, what what do you want me to do with these? Ah, so Dan says uh, it's rifles in the Ardennes. That's it. That is it. Thank you kindly. So, do want to point out that I do have a uh, reviewed game sale going on. It's uh, it's over at thegaminggang.com. I want to take a minute to tell folks what exactly is on sale right now. It is first come, first serve. Sale is going to run through June 9th. And I'm trying to fund my uh, trip to Origins Game Fair. By doing this uh, because if I can't well, I can't go <laughs> there's it's like it you know I, I don't run Kickstarters I don't sit there with my hand out you know saying hey go to my patreon and all this other stuff all the time so uh, anyway so the games that I've got available in my origins game sale is uh, of course I've got the uh, I'm just gonna show some images and stuff as I read some of this stuff off so I've got Shadows of Brimstone, Swamps of Death from Flying Frog Productions. Uh, it is, um, the counters and everything are punched and bagged. Minis are still pretty much on the sprues. I've got Of Dreams and Shadows plus the Monster Within expansion, both from Greenbrier Games together. Uh, Australia from Stronghold Games. There's Forum Trajanum from Stronghold Games. There's Kanban Drivers Edition from Stronghold Games, as well as Fists of Dragonstone Tavern Edition from Stronghold Games. There's also Noria from Stronghold Games as well. I have a copy of Tiny Towns, which I just recently reviewed from AEG. This is brand new in Shrink. So I had not only my own copy uh, that I did a review of, I had another copy. So I've also got uh, some role-playing games. I've got the Overlight RPG hardcover. The Outbreak Undead 2nd Edition Survivor's Guide hardcover. Uh, both of those are from Renegade Game Studios. I've got the 7th C Core Book hardcover from John Wick. This one has a little ding in the lower corner of the front cover. Uh, I've got the John Carter of Mars Role-Playing Game Collector's Edition hardcovers in the slipcase, which is from Modifius Entertainment. I also have the Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Core Book it was the Gen Con hardcover release. And uh, also going back to some of the uh, board games, I've got Warhammer Doomseeker from Ninja Division, Unpunched Unplayed. I've got Millennium Blades core game. I've got some GMT goodness. I've got Ardennes 44, 
Labyrinth the War on Terror, the new printing, and Panzer Expansion number 4, 1940. These are all brand new in shrink. We've got Time of Crisis second printing and Time of Iron and Rust expansion. Those are together. We've got Cataclysm, a second world war, Fort Sumter, Hitler's Reich, Skies Above the Reich, the second printing, which is now out of print. And then I have a UGG title, Fortress Sevastopol. So that is what I've got cooking as far as the um, reviewed and uh, new in shrink games that I do have available for sale. Got to say that, uh, I don't know, if I can't sell about half of those, I don't see being able to go to Origins. No way, no way. All right, so before I move into my review of Sheolia, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, do want to point out, because the gaming gang is not for profit, and of course, neither is the Daily Dope, if you like the site, if you like the show, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. That's right, Lil Bub's Big Fund does provide grant monies to organizations throughout the United States that care for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. These are not kill shelters. These are these are organizations who care for special needs animals who might be blind or deaf or have mobility issues. Maybe they're older. Maybe they require medications. Regardless, these pets do deserve to find their forever homes as well. So if you make a small donation, by all means, shoot me an email. My email address is right down there, Jeff McAleer at thegamegang.com. By all means, fire away. Just let me know if you uh, make a donation. You don't have to prove it or anything like that, and I will give you a shout-out on a following show. All right, so I'm sure some folks are going to be tuned in because they want to see the review of Sheolia, Warring States from Bad Comet Games. It's designed by Henny Chang and Gunho Kim with artwork provided by Sophia Kang. Game is for two or four players, ages 12 and up, plays in about 30 to 60 minutes. It is going to be hitting Kickstarter on June 5th. So let's move on over to the other camera. I've got a bunch of this stuff set up. I'm going to get this box out of the way, move that on over, grab another sip here, and uh, kind of show off the game. So in essence, this is for two or four players. So you can play it where it's one-on-one -on -one or it's two-on-two. -two. There is no four-player game where it's like everybody for themselves. So, uh, so Rob Moffat says, blind, deaf, older, require medications. You just described me. All righty. All righty. So uh, anyway, so effectively the way I kind of look at this is it's like, you know, a couple of ancient city-states who are battling it out is how I kind of see this. Uh, I've got this laid out for for one of the players. So each of the players here are going to have their territory board that's going to be set up. We have the various different buildings and armies and things like that are in the two different decks. This is our level one deck. We've got our level two deck. I'm just going to kind of show you how we set this up. So this is the level two deck. Now level one deck, you're not going to have anything laid out. The level two deck, you're actually going to take three of the cards and lay them out because you can buy the level one cards with gold, but you have to use you have to use level one cards to trade in to get the level two cards. So this is almost uh, almost like showing you what's available right now. Now you can get these cards replaced too if you don't happen to want these cards. We've got a bunch of different tokens. We've got attack tokens. We've got gold. These are single gold pieces. These are five gold pieces. We have dice because this is a dice placement game. It's a bit of a tableau building game as well. We've got officers. That's what these are here. I'm going to zoom in and kind of show some of this stuff off too, but just want to kind of tour around, kind of show you, uh, show you how this is set up. This is, uh, this is like the trading post. This is like the uh, the merchant center here. So you can always do the top 
items here. We've got cards here as well, which uh, can change from game to game, which I like. I think that's kind of cool. So this is kind of the, uh, I don't want to necessarily say marketplace, because you actually can build a marketplace. But uh, this is kind of like a trading center. So we have blocked counters here. We've got extra health counters here. We've got minerals. So we've got the minerals here. We got light, lighter blue and darker blue. We have little health tokens, which are little broken hearts. Like I said, I'm gonna zoom in and show these off. Then we also have, uh, we've got these culture tokens as well. So what, what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna be building locations on your board. You've only got eight total, and two of them are locked until you actually have to pay to unlock them. So the game plays pretty quickly. It, the game's pretty easy to get into as well. It's not difficult to wrap your head around. So we've got, uh, we've got the rule book here. Lots of illustrations, lots of examples. Really pretty simple to uh, to pick up on the game as well, because I there were I think there was one thing that it took us a little bit of time to take a peek at, to kind of search around for to see uh, see if we were doing it correctly, which we were, and I'll mention that when we get into the actual gameplay. One of the other cool things about this too is there's all these different game modes for this, so you can play one on one, two versus two, but you can also play different styles of game. It's always going to be, the victory conditions are almost, I should say almost, always going to be either deal out 12 points of damage to your opponent's palace or score 18 culture points. And this is the culture track down at the bottom here that, uh, that runs along this little board. This is our first player marker big flag. I thought that was kind of cool. All, all together, the uh, components are really nice. Keeping in mind that this is a Kickstarter, this isn't necessarily a prototype because it looks as if this is everything the way it's going to be for the finished game. Yeah, sure. Maybe the card stock will be a little different or something like that. But all in all, this is, I would say, probably about 95% exactly what you're going to see. Uh, I don't like the dice though. They have these really huge single pips on them. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no clue. So Dan from No Enemies here has to get going. All right, Dan, you have a good one. Maybe uh, maybe see you tomorrow for War Game Wednesday before I'm off for like a week. So cool deal. So I'm going to pop my glasses on here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to kind of take a look at some of this stuff. So most of the most of the time, the game is going to start off with each of the players getting five gold. So you're going to have five pieces of gold. Just like so. Okay, there we go. Uh, some other things that are pretty cool before I jump into the actual gameplay. Uh, there are like some optional things as well. You've got like special characters that you can have that are actually working for your city state that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, I'll kind of show those off too when I zoom in a bit. All right, so let's zoom in. Let's kind of focus on our player board. And I'll just move some of this stuff up and off camera because then we'll actually use the player board and I can put other stuff down on here too. So that's fine. Okay. So that's good. We don't need to have that top part. So you're gonna have your player board and your player board shows your palace, shows you the health of the palace. You've got 12 kit points basically to your palace. The palace also provides you with the opportunity to do three different actions. Uh, because as I mentioned before, this is a dice placement game. You're gonna start off with three dice. Every turn, you're going to start off with three dice that you can use. So what you're going to do is you're going to start off the game. You can do the purchase phase. There are three phases in the game. We've got the purchase phase. So in the purchase phase, you can purchase 
Level one cards. You can purchase level one cards for one piece of gold. So that's an example of one thing you can do. Other thing you can do, you can purchase level two cards, but they cost you three level one cards. Second thing you can do, you can buy an extra die for four gold. Or you can purchase an officer for a mineral. Now, minerals uh, are actually created by the different cards that you're going to have in your territory. So those are the four things that you can do during the purchase phase. So let's say for an example... There are my five gold pieces. I start off the game and I say, okay, um, I'm going to purchase three level one cards. Okay, so I bought three level one cards. I got to pay my three gold. So I take a look to see. All right, so what, what did I get here? I, okay, so I've got a blacksmith. I've got a farm. And I've got a barricade. So there are attack cards, there are defense cards, there are culture cards, there are mineral cards. So there are different cards. So for an example here, the blacksmith, which will co which would cost me one gold to build, the blacksmith on a four, I get to gain one mineral. I've got a barricade. The barricade costs me one gold to build. It's got three hit points, or I'm sorry, two hit points. This also has two hit points. This must be attacked first. So if the other player were attacking me, they would have to attack this first. They couldn't attack my palace because this is a defensive, uh, this is a defensive building. But it also has to go in the top front row. That would have to go just like so. All right, so we've got that. Then we've got a farm cost me one gold to build the farm and it says on a four I gain three gold so I have two gold left I did my purchase phase so I, my purchase phase ended I've got these cards now I go to a building phase so the building phase allows me to pay to purchase and build any of the cards that I've got in my hand I can pay three gold to unlock one of these locked spaces I've got here which I don't need to do that just yet um, and that's what I can do in the build phase. Uh, I can also tear down a location that I've already built that I want to get rid of. Because what will happen is, as you're playing the game, your territory is going to change. You're, never, you're not going to sit there all game long with a blacksmith, a farm, things like that. When you start getting into level 2 buildings, and I'll show some of these off in a minute. When you start getting into some of the level 2 buildings, you're going to have special abilities so for an example like um the bank the bank gives you gold if you activate buildings on either the left or right of it so as an example here i'll say okay i'm not too concerned with my opponent attacking me so i'm going to take my two gold and i'm going to purchase the blacksmith and i'm going to purchase the farm pay those out and I put them down here. Simple enough. That is my build phase. Now, remember, I've got my three dice. So I've got three dice. I'm going to roll my three dice. And I'm hoping I possibly get some fours here. And I got one. So I've got a, a four, or five, and a six. So do I want to get three gold or do I want to get mineral? Well... Now we're in the action phase. So I take my dice and I'll say, okay, I'm going to gain a mineral because I can get gold in other ways. Remember, the palace allows you to use any die for any of three things. And you can do it each of these once. So you can gain two gold, you can gain two gold, you can gain two officers. Officers allow you to change 
the face of a die one direction either way. Uh, so Rob says, oh, you got to get a four spot on just for these buildings. I'm going to show you more buildings. Of course, you're going to have more dice uh, for your dice placement. So it, officers allow you to change. So if I had a six, I could change that either to a one. Or I could change it to a five. And that's what the officers do. If you have two officers, you could spend two officers to change a die face two if you want so uh yes it's a four spot on not four or higher correct so that's what the officers do so what i would do here i had a five and a six right so i'll take a five put it over here i'll gain two gold back i'm gonna take my six and i'm gonna gain two officers so that's that would effectively be the end of my first turn uh, but there's other stuff that goes on in the action phase. So give me an example. Let's look through some of these cards here. So we've got infantry, right? Infantry costs you one gold. They take two hits. On a six, they deal one damage. I've got infantry here on a two. They deal one damage. Got a school. Six, gain one culture. On a one, gain one culture. So even though... Um, some of these are identical. They do the same exact thing. The die face that you need to activate them happen to be different. So we already saw the barricade. We got the blacksmith. Let's scan the farm. More infantry. The school. Here we go. Here's the market. You can trade once. Remember, we've got that trade. The trade board. Uh, so these are the level one buildings. As you can see, they don't, they don't have a whole lot of hits that they can take. Okay, so that's to kind of give you an idea. So at, let's say as an example, it's later on in the game and... It's looking like this, right? So I've got, let's say I've got, uh, I've got infantry. I could have used my six for my infantry here to deal a point of damage. Now I can, when I'm attacking my opponent, I can either attack the palace or I can attack a building or, you know, a locale, something that's got the little hit points up here with the little hearts. So, uh, for an example, the barricade helps you because I, that has to be attacked first. There's there's a wall too. There's I'll show you in the level twos because there's more level two stuff. So, for an example, if my opponent had infantry and I had a setup like this, they would attack and they attack the barricade. And if it was just infantry and they did a point of damage. I would actually take one of these little broken hearts and put that on the barricade. Uh, this is not a game where you have to, uh, like, say, overcome the defense in a single turn. There is uh, an accumulation. So Rob says it looks like a lot of two-hit stuff. Yes, in the level one stuff, in the in the very early game stuff, there it's all it's basically all two hits. But let me show you some of the level two. So we've got, these are already sitting out in the, in the purchase area. So you got a market or port. So before you can build this, you must have a market or port. So this has a prerequisite, but allows you to trade with two trading posts. It's three hits, costs three gold to build this. We've got a caravan, so you need a market or a caravan on a two, on just on this card, because remember, there's going to be more than just one of these caravans. Trade once when buying, minus one gold per item, when selling, plus one gold per item. Then we got the bank. I was talking about this before. So this has a passive, this has a passive ability, and it says, gain two gold when a card to the left or right activates. 
So as an example, if I had this here and I activated the blacksmith, I would get a mineral and I'd also get two gold because that activated to the left of this card. Show you a few, a uh, few other cards. We've got some wonders as well. So there's a, um, there's a, a mode of gameplay where you can either get the 18 culture, you can get the 12 damage on the palace to destroy your opponent, or you can build three wonders. And the wonders have a kind of red border that goes around the card. So we've got, for an example, this is a war elephant. Uh, a lot of these level two cards will have kind of like an either or aspect to them. So for an example, this war elephant here is on any die, I would deal two damage. But if I get a two, a three, deal seven damage. <laughs> so I was like, holy cow. For an example, we got a catapult. So keeping in mind, what's above this is the prerequisite. So infantry or catapult, which is a little confusing for some people. Yes, <laughs> so Rob says it must be Hannibal. Yes, it's Hannibal with his war elephants. Uh, you would think the prerequisite should, should have been somewhere else on the card rather than being right on top of what it is. So... The catapult, for an example, on a five, deal one damage or three damage on defensive cards. And then one, two, deal one damage to all cards in the front row. So we got, there's the cav uh, catapult. We've got cavalry. We've got a gym. So for an example, it says, uh, place one attack token on an attack card before rolling dice. So say an example, we've got infantry here. Let's say we were, we had a two during our turn and we decided, okay, well, I've got my gym that's gonna give me an attack token. And basically the attack token is increasing the damage. So we got a smelter. See how we've got kind of like these either or, either gain two minerals, gain four minerals if we spend the two dice. We've got a swamp. We've got a mine. We've got a library. We've got a theater. These are where you start getting the culture. you got the culture aspect of the game. Because remember, most of the time, oh yeah, so Rob says, wow, there's definitely a military element to this game. There is, there's a military element, but the reality is it's still a dice placement game. So you can either go about trying to attack your opponent and destroy their palace, or you can try to be getting culture. So as an example here, like the school, or, uh, nope, it was, there it is, there's a school. So on a one, you gain one culture. You got this culture track over here that runs along the bottom of your territory. You can probably stand it up, but I'm laying it down so you can see that token a little bit better. So once you get to 18, then you win. So it's either destroy the opponent's palace or get to 18 culture. That's the vast majority of the time with the game modes, that's how you win. Like I said, there's also the build three wonders mode. So, uh, so an example, we've got, there's the port again, the bank, the mine, the fortress. So remember, this is defensive. It'll show you, okay, this is a defensive card. This is an attack card because it's got the little cross swords. This has a shield that has the little culture token on it. So that's a culture card. It shows a mineral on it. So we know that that's, a, you know, a mineral card. Uh, where's the bank again? Oh, okay, here's a ranch for an example. So we got a ranch. It's got a little gold token there. So it's a gold card. So for an example, we got the fortress. We got the big old fortress here. Look at all the, look at all the hits that'll take. But it's also gonna cost four gold to build. That's no big deal. The four minerals, that's kind of tough to get. Of course, this would have to go in the front row and it has to be attacked first. So if you have a fortress, you've got, you've got, 
good defenses to protect that palace. So, uh, anyway, let's uh, kind of show off some of the um, some of the components a little closer up. So these are the little cross swords. These are the attack tokens. These are the gold coins. Got like a little three D element to the coins. So that's one coin. These count for five coins. These are the officers that I was talking about. And it's always good to have these officers because uh, especially as you start getting into later game, uh, you're going to you're going to be spending gold to buy extra dice on your turn. So you're going to want to make sure you've got officers as well so that you can sit there and be able to change those dice faces to what you need them to be. Plus, keeping in mind, the palace can always on any die during your your uh, action phase. You can always use any die to gain two more officers. There's uh, there's other ways to get the officers, too. Something else I want to point out. Uh, we got the blocked. So there's ways to get this like blocked counter, which you would place on any location like this. So that means that uh, the player cannot utilize the special abilities of that building until they get rid of the blocked counter. There's ways for you to add extra hits to buildings. These are these little hearts with the little plus signs on them. We've got the minerals again, the lighter and the darker. We were just saying this is one mineral and this is, uh, whoops, wrong one, five minerals, the darker blue. But there aren't a lot of minerals in the in the game. So uh, as far as the components in that, that was the one that we kind of felt that uh, we didn't have enough of were the uh, were the little little minerals. Yeah, the bits are pretty cool. Uh, yeah, the uh, the components are, are nicely done. I was surprised. I got to be honest. I was very surprised. I was asked if I would take a look at this for the Kickstarter, and I gotta be honest, I was I was pretty impressed. This isn't the deepest game around. This isn't the most strategic game around. Uh, there's a lot of luck that comes into play too, but uh, we we have enjoyed playing it. Something else I want to show off here. Here's a little Broken Hearts. I kind of get a kick out. It's got the little crack running through it. This is the trading. So here, like you see where it says sell mineral, you can do it. A, you can do a max of three, get three gold each, buy minerals, buy them for two, hire mercenaries, which basically just deal one point of damage. You can buy a level two card from the discard pile because there is a discard pile and it. You will run through your level one cards in a game. And when you, when you run out, when you got the discard, all you got to do is shuffle them back up. So, uh, but these are the these are the little things that change. And depending on the mode you're playing, it might tell you which of these cards you're going to lay out. But you've got six of them, and we've got the four locations there. So, for an example, let's kind of show you here. Here, I'll show you the trading post cards. Say, okay, lay these out in the trade war game. So if you're playing the trade war mode, this is what you'll set up. Uh, when you're first learning how to play the game, there's uh, there's kind of an introductory, the prelude, and you won't use all of the level two cards. You only use certain level two cards. So. Uh, so I like this aspect because then this makes the trading post different every game. And the thing is, you can't you can't just use the trading post. You have to be able to get a trade, right? So like in the market, right? Trade once. That's what trading is. It's using this board. So that's uh, I like that. Then we've also got these characters. So we've got these little characters that they they don't represent you. They represent characters who are working for your city-state. And depending on the game mode you're playing, you could have up to two of these in your employ. And effectively what they are, they're cards that you're going to 
keep secretly until you decide to use them, or if you don't want to actually use the special ability of the character, you can sell it. You can get four gold for it. So right there, it even says, if you sell this card, gain four. So we got a merchant, got rich baby, captain, general, alchemist, philosopher, the architect, strategist, the shaman, and the giant. So, uh, so once again, even if you're playing two on two, you've got 10 characters. That was another aspect of this that I kind of, kind of like too, is you got some extras. Too many times you'll see games where it's like, oh, well, you know, four players, each of you get two cards. So we'll put eight of those cards in there. And you're like, huh? <laughs> so Rob says, need some engineers. All right, so anyway, so uh, your game will continue. I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. Your game's gonna continue until, depending on the game mode, but usually it'll continue until somebody gets 18 culture points or you've been able to take your opponent's palace down to zero. So once that happens, you are declared the winner. Uh, and that's pretty much the game. As far as you see me stacking these cards on top of each other, that's not how you actually build. You would actually be sitting there and you would be destroying, let's say, for an example, I've got a blacksmith, right? So I got the blacksmith and I'm like, okay, well, I want to be able to build uh, a level two card here or something different here. During my building phase, I would destroy this. I get nothing for it. It's just destroyed uh, and then spend the cost to build the other location. So for an example, let's say I built a school here or library, I should say, and I already had a school. See, I'm cheating because that's a prerequisite. I need to have a school or a library. But yeah, I was just stacking stuff up just to show cards off. You're not really going to be stacking up. You're not going to be building things on top of other things. So uh, all in all, like I said, I was very pleasantly surprised by, uh, you know, and, and it's like, I'm not even sure how to pronounce the game <laughs> name. Sheolia? Sheolia? I don't know. Uh, I think that's it. Um, I want to say that uh, Bad Comet Games is a Korean company, I believe. I think. I'm not positive, but I do think so. So, all in all, what do I think of Sholia Warring States? Well, I think you can tell I do like it. Uh, it's it's not real in-depth. It's, uh, it's, it's fairly thematic. It's not dripping in theme, but it is fairly thematic. And you, you kind of get the feeling of, of going about trying to build up your empire, your little empire. Like I said, it's more like a city-state to me. Um and trying to battle your opponent at the same time. So you're kind of juggling one of the ways that you're looking to try to achieve victory while still trying to protect your own territory from your opponent who's attacking. So uh, some people won't like the whole, you know, uh, gotta be going after the other guy. You could play it where you're only playing to reach the 18 culture points. I gotta be honest, I think that would be pretty blah. I don't I don't think that'd be very exciting. Uh, I do like the artwork. The artwork's a little cartoonish. Um, but it's okay. I mean it's it's not silly. It just kind of has a, a bit of a, a kind of cartoony vibe to it. Almost like a um especially like like looking at the buildings. The buildings have a bit of a um almost like real-time strategy look to them so uh yeah for some reason it looks like uh the stream is dropping off here all right uh, let's see let's see here let's see if i can kind of kick start this back up 
because sometimes uh, now I don't know. It might just be. Uh, it's possible that it's it's our internet connection. I do not know. I am not sure. So, but yes, it uh, it's kind of breaking up there. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, the um, the artwork is kind of. I mean, this is fine. I don't have like an issue with like that. Uh, but then we get like rich baby, and it's kind of like uh, okay. I'm like, I don't know. But, um, and as I started to say, as the stream was kind of dropping there, the, uh, the artwork for like the buildings and the, like the structures and like the infantry and catapults and stuff like that, they kind of have a, like a real time strategy vibe to them. So anyway, uh, I like the fact that you've got various ways to actually win. I like that you've got the different game modes. I like the fact this is very, very easy to get into. It took Cameron 10 minutes to figure the game out. Um, that said, it is pretty light. There aren't uh, there aren't a lot of like hidden levels of depth to it or strategic depth. There is a lot of luck. Any dice placement game usually has a lot of luck built into it. Uh, there's even more luck involved because keeping in mind, you don't get to pick the level one cards that are, they're not face up. You're actually going to purchase these sight unseen. It is possible for you to actually get cards that you don't really have any need for. So that could be a hassle for some people. I didn't mind it. I thought it was all right. I thought it was fine as far as uh, the luck kind of evening out. But I do want to bring out the fact that uh, the luck factor may turn some people off. And it is a light game and it's not very heavy strategy game whatsoever anyway at the end of the day all in all i definitely do recommend sholia warring states if i were giving it a numeric review score which i know i try not to do that with kickstarters because we're not positive this is what you're going to receive but like i said before this is like 95 percent what you will receive finished product so I do feel confident enough to give it a very solid 8.3 out of 10. All right, so that's it for the show. Some strange reason, I don't know what's going on. It looks like we're uh, we're getting some drop frames and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, good thing it's the end of the show. All right, so on tomorrow's show, as I pointed out, I'm going to take a look at Rifles in the Pacific. And then I will be gone for about a week. I will not be back until June 4th will be my next show. So I have no clue what might be happening for that show. Anyway, hopefully you join me tomorrow for War Game Wednesday. As I like to point out, as Pinky comes down to start complaining at the end of the show too. Yes, Pinky. Goofy, goofy cat. As I like to say. Or you're not watching videos on thegaminggang.com or on the Gaming Gang channel. See, the cat threw me off. <laughs> threw me off of what I was going to say. As I like to say, when you're not watching videos on YouTube on the Gaming Gang channel, please visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. I'll be back tomorrow. Enjoy your Tuesday night. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching.